Alright, what is going on everybody? So if you're looking to get Wish Ender in Destiny 2 in 2023, in order to get it, you do need to own Forsaken. And what you want to do is you can go to the helm or the tower and you want to go under the quest archive. And here under Exotics and Legacy, you will see the Wish Ender quest in here. I already have it, but I'll put a pop-up on what the screen looks like. It will say Wish Ender and then it will say present talisman to Awoken Warrior. And basically what we need to do is we need to go into the Shattered Throne dungeon and we need to present this talisman. So you're going to have to run this dungeon two times up to the statue. So one to present the talisman and one to cleanse the tokens. And before we start, if you do need any help, as you can see at the bottom left of the screen, we have about, what, 2251 exotic helps. I have all the checkpoints for Wish Ender, as you can see, I have one now. So if you ever want help getting Wish Ender, if you don't feel like doing it solo or you're struggling, come by the stream, twitch.tv slash tricks. I'll gladly help you out. It will take us like 10 minutes. It won't be bad at all, but anyways, moving on into the quest. Now, there are plenty of bugs with this quest to start off. The quest can be kind of a pain sometimes, and doing the dungeon all the way through up to the statue can be very tough solo, but it's a nice challenge if you want one. And like I said, if you want help, want to get it done a lot faster than that, I'll gladly help you out in getting it. So starting off, we're going to do the opening encounter of the dungeon. I'm going to explain the encounters as we go. That way you kind of have an idea of what I'm doing, as well as what you need to do if you're just going to follow along with this quest. I will also upload another video if you already know how to do the dungeon and everything, and you just want to know how to cleanse the tokens and how to present your talisman. I will upload a shorter version for Wish Center, because I know, you know, this video isn't for everyone. But this video is going to be mostly for people that are solo players or are new to the game and just kind of need a guide like this. So, for this encounter, basically all we're doing is killing ads as well as the yellow bar labyrinths that are going to be on each symbol and each time you kill those yellow bar labyrinths as well as the ads around them a new symbol is going to spawn so i'm going to put a map of all the locations basically it might help you a little bit for finding the symbol that you have to go to the symbols are randomized it's not in any order so you could just be running back and forth and it could be a pain sometimes but that's just how it is so what I'm going to do is, as you can see, we start off here. Just going to kill these ads. A good loadout for this, if you're wondering. I like using Lament, but if you don't have Lament, or if you don't want to run swords, you want to play the, um, like the slower pass, or the slower paced route. You can go like blinding grenades uh, with like a linear or a bow or something like that. But for the most part, a sword for this beginning will be pretty good because a lot of these encounters are you know very up close and personal the first symbol that we go to is going to be the use snake so once we're done killing everything also i'm sorry if i'm talking fast there's a ton of information to explain as we do it but i've done this so many times as well so if i'm going too quick i'm trying not to like speed run through it but i'm also trying not to um like go too slow i want to like keep the pace nice to where you can just do the quest and follow us video as we go we'll use our lament that labyrinth is dead and then we got our next symbol so we get fish so we're actually getting some of them pretty close together which is nice also you got to watch out for the uh the phalanxes in this phalanxes in general just will randomly one tap you and doing this dungeon plenty of times out of nowhere these phalanxes in this dungeon will do that to you so be on the lookout for that. <laughs> it gets annoying, but... Like these, right here, yep. Yeah. Like, they'll just melee you, and it'll be a guaranteed one-tap. So, next symbol we have is Infinite Snake, so we're gonna run a little bit. And when I show the tokens, so basically, when you present your talisman, you're gonna get three tokens. And people think that you can do the tokens before presenting your talisman... And unfortunately, that's not how it works. So, if you're doing the tokens right now and you haven't presented your talisman, you are not going to get the bow. So, I'm going to say that now. That way, you're not confused if you are watching this and you're doing the tokens right now. Make sure you have presented your talisman already. Kill this dude. Oh, we got some ammo too, which is nice. There we go. Next symbol is dragon. 
So we have the dragon symbol left. I have the bird symbol up there. And then the 6-9 fish one is down there. And listen, if you if you want to try this quest solo before you ask me for help or anything, go for it. I know. Some people don't have that much time and it can be kind of stressful trying to do this quest solo. Even me sometimes, I, I lose my mind. Alright, so 6-9 fish can actually just take a shortcut. Be careful. This is the one I would say pop your super on, for sure. Only because I've popped bubble and like every super on this guy. And he he's a phalanx, so he has that melee that will just one-tap you. So be careful here. Because if you die on any of these symbols, you have to start from the beginning. Which is not fun. We have the bird symbol to finish things off. gonna make our way my keyboard's kind of broken so when I jump it just like sticks or like double clicks it so that uses my jump I gotta be careful yeah if you fall off the map or anything here try to like not to do any crazy jumps Cause like I said this is my last symbol so if I die here I gotta start from the beginning which I do not want to happen pop a healing nade is tracking on the wrong enemies and you know that you're done with all these symbols because the symbol that spawns in looks like that that's how you know you're done so that means we got to go back to the spawn just gonna keep running these sniper rifles up top too can be a pain they usually miss most of their shots but sometimes they have really good tracking they, they turn on next games mode and the aimbot comes on, but we come back to the beginning where we started. We have this final symbol here. And there we go. There is the first encounter done. So that's how you do the first encounter. When we do the tokens later, I'm not going to show how to do the whole first encounter everything. Only because we have already done this. So I feel like I don't have to show that again. So now we're going to get this weird thing on our screen where we can't see for a second. It will go away. And if it doesn't, just run backwards and then run forward and we should be all right. And for this part, there's a nice little shortcut that we can take. So you jump up here, then you can jump on that rock. But I'm not going to do that because not everyone can jump like that. So we're going to start from down here. You don't have to kill all these enemies. You can run past them. The Taken do melt your health super quick. So you could be full health and out of nowhere you're one shot. Also watch out for this phalanx that hides over here. He can be scary. And yeah, here we are. So we get to the top and there's going to be a yellow bar enemy that we got to kill. But I would recommend killing some enemies before there's going to be... See, here's the enemy that we got to kill. The Asterion. So we kill him, and that will open that door, but there's going to be like ads all up top and stuff, so you got to play it safe. And for this next part, I call this the Walk of Shame. If you've ever taken a Walk of Shame, uh, this is basically what it is if you've never done it. Uh, everyone's staring at you. You have to run down this middle area. Now, if you want to play it safe and put a scout rifle on or a sniper rifle and just pick some of these enemies off, you totally can do that. Take your time. Don't feel like you have to rush. Um, if you're on Hunter, you can invince all the way through. Uh, the middle, if you're on Warlock, uh, Daybreak with Heat Rises, you can just fly to the end. And on Titan, if you're on Solar, we can just run for it down the middle. Now, if you can't do that, just jump up on that ledge over there and jump across. This is probably the hardest part that you'll encounter is trying to make it through the Walk of Shame, but... If you have a healing nade or anything, just try to use that. I like to use my hammer a lot here. You can shoot these phalanxes in the feet. There, see, there's that melee I gotta be careful for, because that will kill us, for sure. And there we go. So, like I said, you saw how many enemies were shooting at me and how much. It wasn't doing as much damage, because I'm on 
Solar Titan with Lorley, which is just disgusting, but I'm gonna change to Lions right here. But yeah, you gotta be careful on that part for sure. And this next encounter is this walk beam. If you ever done ballet or something? Basically, these ogres are gonna be shooting you as you walk on there. So if you wanna put a sniper rifle on or a scout rifle, once again, uh, let me see if I have anything. So I have my succession here, so. Just shoot them. Shoot the other ogre. Take your time here because these ogres just <laughs> are so annoying. I think if you die here, you actually start all the way back at the top. So definitely be careful. That's why I like to kill these ogres before I even consider running too far. We're just going to keep running. It's going to be more ogres that spawn in. And if I'm going too fast and you want to pause the video, feel free. Kill this ogre to the right that's going to spawn in. Now sometimes, you see where those blights are? Sometimes the ogre will spawn in there. And the blight will spawn in, like, on the other side. Sometimes it depends. Like, like back there, for example, too. Um, it just, those first two ogres are always there, usually. But sometimes they occasionally spawn in somewhere else. So you just got to be careful for that. That's killed me. Way too many times. And then we're going to have two more ogres here at the end. One to the left, one to the right. You can kind of just run for it and then you can kill this ogre. Oh. If we don't get slammed off the map. So yeah, be careful. And then in this room. So this room is the first thrall room. And you won't be able to like sprint or you can't double jump or anything. And when you take damage, you actually don't get your health back. So, you got to be careful in this room. These Thrall, look, they're very weak. They die super quick. But, I'll show you how quick the health will go down. Let me see. And it doesn't go back. You see how my health went down? It's just stuck there. So, if I want to get it back, I have my healing nade. And really quickly, if you want the first secret chest, while we're doing it, might as well. You see this beam down here? Just jump down. Loot this chest. See if you get anything good. And come back to the portal. Just gonna keep spraying these enemies. They don't look deadly, but they are. Subsistence. He's just rolling through them, though. <laughs> Giving me my ammo back. Let me get my one shot in the magazine. We're almost there. We're just going to keep running a little bit. Now, after you jump down here, sometimes there's a bug where you don't get your health back. Um, And further in this, you will need to go into that room. So if you make it here and your health doesn't come back, I'll see if mine does. It might. But if it doesn't, change to solar. See, mine did. Put a healing aid on. Um, If you're on hunter, put worm husk on and dodge. That will give you your health back. But there's little bugs like that that can get annoying, so. I'm also going to take my sniper rifle off now. And we are going to be approaching the final ogre room. So this is going to be the final room that we need to do for the dungeon. And remember, we got to do this through twice. So this is the first run. Just got to watch out for those blights on the wall. There's going to be a bunch of phalanxes up here. You take this little shortcut. Not really shortcut, but like path to- Oh, there goes my space key. Don't mind that. Gotta get a new keyboard. <laughs> yeah, we uh, could just jump up here. Kind of slip by them real quick. And there we go. We don't gotta worry about them. And we're gonna keep going down. Now, there is a bug where if you run too quick... You see how that there's no like... um. Like, thing at the top, I'll show you, like, the eye. I forgot what it is, but you run back. You see how it does it, like, the no revive logo. If you jump down there and that's not there, sometimes the ogres won't spawn in. And you'll either have to use um, something to make it back up here to start it. Or, unfortunately, since you're solo, you'd have to do the dungeon again. So, always make sure, if you're doing this right now, just run here. And no matter what, 
just to make sure the game registers. Run back here and then do it again, just to make sure, because trust me, the last thing you want is having to do this again solo. We've already made it to the end. And then for this part, there's going to be a bunch of wizards that spawn in, so there's going to be one in the middle, one to the left, one straight across, and one to the right. When we kill the wizards, it is going to drop a petitioner's mark buff, so I'm going to show you. So, we kill one and it drops that little circle, that's petitioner's mark. And as you can see, we have a timer on our screen for like 40 seconds. Once I hit zero, we die. To extend the timer, we just kill the next one, pick up the petitioner's mark, and as you can see, we get more time back. And we're just going to keep killing them until we get each of their buffs. So times three. Then our last one is over here. And these four dishes in the middle, as you see, there were some over there. We just have to deposit in one of those to start DPS phase. So either one, it doesn't matter which one. Truthfully, you can go for any of them. And as you can see, we killed the last one. We have Petitioner's Burden, so since the Ogre's kind of close to this one, I'm going to extinguish it here. He's going to shoot these little orbs. Be careful for those, because those will kill you. And I'm just going to lament him. Now, it won't always be a one phase. We could try to get close to a one phase, but I don't think we'll get one right now. Because I don't have Thunder Crash or Bubble or anything on, but that's alright. If you got a two phase, you got a two phase. It's no big deal. We just gotta spam Lament and hope. So, alright, we do end up getting the one phase. And if you don't one phase, that's alright. Basically, do the same thing. Killing all the wizards. Get Petitioner's Mark times four. You can't deposit in the same dish, so I deposited in that one. I could deposit in this one, in this one, or that one, and then kill the ogre. And yeah, that's it. So, that is for the first step that says Present Talisman. It will say step one of one. But that is not the only step. So your quest is going to disappear. I'm going to show on the screen what the tokens look like, right? So it will say approach. You want to get up nice and close to the statue right here. Sometimes people are like all the way back here. And they're like, it's not doing anything. You want to get up nice and close. And if you do this and you have the quest in your inventory and it's not working, try picking the quest up on another character. Because sometimes this quest does bug out. We've had that a couple times where people join... They can't present their talisman, and it just doesn't work on that character for some reason. So you could do it on a different character, and if you don't feel like doing this again, like I said, I'll help you do it. And once you present your talisman, you're going to get three dreaming tokens. And with these dreaming tokens, we have to cleanse them and turn them into waking tokens in the dungeon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do the, all three of those tokens. And if you want to follow along, you can. I'm not going to show the whole dungeon again, but I'll show each token and what I do for it. So... For the first token, we're going to reset our checkpoint progress, and we're going to load back into the start of the dungeon. So once we load into the dungeon, we have our three Dreaming Tokens. We have the Dreaming Tokens of Quirum, we have the Dreaming Tokens of Erevix, as well as the Dreaming Tokens of Zavoth. So Zavoth is actually the final ogre, that giant ogre, so that token is going to be last. The first token we're going to take care of right now. So where we need to go is we need to make it right up there. The top of that's where the dragon symbol is so we're gonna head to that token now do this token first before you do the symbols because once you complete this encounter like you do all the symbols that orb will actually despawn so make sure the first thing you do in this dungeon is go take uh take care of that orb so if we don't do that token you gotta do the opening encounter again so i'm trying to give you every tip i have <laughs> that's what she said but anyways um I'm trying to give all the tips that I know, just from doing this so many times. So yeah, we're just gonna run past those enemies real quick. Take our little shortcut here. Jump up on this tree. Hopefully your movement's okay, because you're gonna have to use it here. <laughs> we just jump on top of this statue. And here is the first dreaming token that we're going to take care of. I'm going to take that. Jump across. And if you don't make it, right, if you say you fall, you could just climb right down there where I'm looking at. You could just climb that tree and you'll make it. 
But you should be able to make this jump, no problem. There's a couple other ways to make it, too, but... This is the easiest way. So we're going to deposit this token, and that is going to spawn in two mini-bosses. So the first one... Lament is just having a fun time. So this is the first token that we're going to do. My Lament is just... I don't know what's going on right now, but... There we go. So there's the first token done. So the Dreaming token is going to turn into the Waking token. So that's going to be the first token. And now what we got to do is do the encounter normally. And we're going to make it... Remember that ogre room where we had like those little ballet beams that we had to balance on and kill those ogres? That is where the second token is going to be. So I'm going to continue the video at that second token encounter. I'm going to show you how to do the second token. Okay, so once we make it to the ogre room, you want to take care of all the ogres. That way, you don't got to worry about them when you're doing the tokens. I already did that to make it easier for myself. So for the first token, once we do kill all those ogres and get them out of the, the way, there's going to be the first relic over here. We're just going to carry this one. And you can, whatever your melee key is, you can actually um, swing the relic. Makes it go a lot faster. So whatever you use for your melee, if you jump in melee, it goes way faster than normal. So it's just a quick tip to hopefully save you a little time. Or if you're you know, not killing the ogres and you want to try to stay alive. Just use your melee. Just jump melee, jump melee with the relic. And you'll move. You definitely want to use it where this thrall room is up here. That way you can, you know, get through that room as quick as possible without those thrall killing us, so. Every time I jump, it automatically uses everything. Stupid keyboard. Anyways, once we get into this room, I'm gonna put back more Leon for now, just for when we take damage. So, we're slowed in this room, so like, once again, we can't sprint. We can't jump. We're going to pick this relic up to the right. Now, this is the second token has these basically three parts to it. So, we do that first token there. And then we grab this one. And we're just going to run with it. And once again, we're still on that second token. So, it will be the dreaming token of Aravix. Has a couple parts to it, but doesn't take that long just jump in use your melee keep doing that and if you'll notice I'm gonna deposit the orb right here and before when we went this way that door straight across was not open but since we're doing the tokens as you can see it's in that statue's hand over there that's how we know that we're doing it correctly. If those doors aren't open, you missed one of those tokens that I just showed you. Something's messed up. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump across. Now, I will say, if you die at any part before killing this boss in here, you do have to do both of those two tokens again. So really quickly, if you die, there are a couple different ways that you can get back up. You mostly want Salvation's Grip to just boost you back up but you can use salvation's grip you don't have to start from scratch if you have a buddy as well that has salvation's grip what you can do is they jump up here and then you want to jump on top of this statue's head which i'm not going to do because i don't have um lines on and you shoot your salvation's grip on that wall and you can actually make it back up and you just go back to where that ogre encounter room is i'm not going to do it all because you know for the sake of the video but if you do die on that part you have salvation script or if anyone else has it they can help you just climb back up do the tokens again and kill the boss because if you die here you will have to start from the very beginning of the dungeon so be careful you also don't have to do all of these tokens at once like if you want to do one token first and like you get bored or like the very beginning token, the one at the like opening of the dungeon. If you want to do that one, like have one waking token and the other two are dreaming tokens. If you want to get back to the quest in like a week, you can do that. All three of the dreaming tokens don't have to be done in one run. We actually never do them in one run. I usually have all the checkpoints to where we 
do each token without having to do the whole dungeon because doing the whole dungeon can take a while so our hammer we'll pick that back up and once we kill enough ads Aravix will spawn in I don't know what they're doing but they're really easy to kill not bad at all and then once we kill the boss these doors will open back up Just gotta watch out those blights on the wall kill this phalanx we'll keep running once again these phalanxes will just kind of slip past them And once we jump back down, don't forget to turn around here, just in case. Like I said, if I jump down there, it won't start. So I'm going to jump backwards to actually start the encounter. And for this part, remember how we would dunk after killing all those wizards with our petitioner's mark and then kill the ogre? This time, we're not going to do that. We actually have to spawn a mini ogre in. So what that means is once we deposit petitioner's mark into one of those dishes there is going to be a invisible minotaur that's going to spawn in. and i'll show you where he spawns and people say that it's bugged and he doesn't spawn in but nine times out of ten he is there i've done this hundreds of times and there's not been one time to where he didn't spawn in so i'll show you where he'll spawn in. he only spawns in after you dunk petitioner's mark so we kill the first wizard i always go this way always go to the left when we're starting because we want to end and deposit it on that side over there so kill all these enemies be careful for the ogre because he'll just start lasering you out of nowhere kill that one Kill these enemies. And there's Petitioner's Burden. So we're going to deposit in this one. It doesn't have to be this one, but it's the closest one to where the Invisible Minotaur will spawn in. So we'll come out of that wall, and he'll be right here. So he always spawns out of that. It's really easy to find him, but if you're late to him, he will actually like run around the map. And he could be like over here, over there. He'll, he'll move. And as you're doing it, this ogre is going to be shooting these at you. Just shoot them as you run. And we're going to run with the orb right over here. I wish I have a heavy brick waiting for us too, which is nice. And once we deposit that orb, the mini ogre is going to spawn in. So we have the final dreaming token, Zavoth. And once we kill him, we'll get the pop-up saying waking token of Zavoth and all we gotta do now is kill this final ogre just like we did before so we'll take care of that really quickly let me just pick up a bunch of ammo as we go I like using arc for this usually but when you're doing it solo, just having healing grenades and especially on Titan, having the hammer is just it's so good. Alright, so we get Petitioner's Burden. The Ogre's kind of hugging this one. But be careful when he sprays you, like, it's ridiculous sometimes. So, we deposit, and then we're just gonna kill him, just like before. Well, we get a one phase, hopefully, but you never know. Sometimes gets messed up and if you die on this ogre after you get the last token of Zavoth the waking token that's okay you just have to kill this ogre so if you fail after you get your waking token that's okay just make your way you don't got to do the token over again as long as it says waking 
in your inventory, you'll be alright. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that's <laughs> that is what you hate to see. That bug right there, but that's right, we'll just kill I'll show you how uh two phase isn't that bad. That's what I'm saying, sometimes this dungeon is just super buggy. There's times two. There we go. So we have this final. Well, not we gotta kill. There's that. This ogre is going in. So yeah, we just deposit again. And there is Wish Ender in all its glory. Easy peasy. So we kill that ogre. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually approach the statue again. Now, sometimes people are saying that, like, they'll have all the waking tokens, and they couldn't collect the bow. They said, like, two of these are glowing. Ignore that. Go right up and close to this statue and collect your bow, and you will get it. And that is going to be it on how to get Wish Ender in Destiny 2. I tried to go through everything as quick as I could, but not rush anything and explain everything I was doing. So if this video did help, let me know if you have any questions, or once again, if you do need any help. Wish Ender by yourself could take a little bit. And if I help you with it, it will literally take us... I, like, I love doing Wish Ender help. It's, you know, one of my favorite things to do. It'll take us, like, 10 minutes. I'm not, like, over-exaggerating that at all. Literally be 10 minutes. You join on my checkpoint. You present your talisman. You get your three tokens, and then we cleanse them, which I have all the checkpoints for those. Save you all your time. Get stuff done. And, you know, it's, it's fun to do it with people. So, if you need any help or anything like that, come by the stream, twitch.tv slash trigs. Or just come by when I'm live on YouTube. Either one works. That's going to be it for the video, and I'll see you all in the next one, alright? Peace.